In this video, we're doing a neutralize field commander mission, and it's in the hunter's territory once again. The last time we did a mission like this, we didn't have many kits and narrowly avoided taking a serious hit. So we're going to be taking a pretty strong group for this one. In our squad, we have a Colonel Rank Reaper for scouting. A Colonel Rank Ranger, who has rapid fire for maximum damage. Our top ranking Grenadier, who now also has saturation fire. Our Skirmisher, so he can use justice to potentially pull the commander towards us if necessary. Our Spark for overdrive shooting. And then our Colonel Rank Sharpshooter as well. We have a lot of Colonels in the squad this mission, we're taking no chances. For this mission, we've equipped our new Wraith suit on our Sharpshooter. Now she'll be able to grapple up to a high ground position as a free action and still be able to take three or more shots with her pistol. Other than that, we have a few noteworthy additions. As usual, we have the Talon rounds and blue screen rounds as always, and our skirmisher is carrying the mimic beacon like before, so he can take a shot and then throw the beacon out if needed. But we know the only cybernetic enemy on this mission is a sectopod, so our grenadier has the war suit for three explosives with the rocket launcher. And our ranger is actually carrying a medikit, just in case the hunter does show up and we aren't as lucky this time. Menace 1 5, we're tracking the Advent General and his escorts, but we don't have an exact fix on their location. Sweep the area and eliminate the target along with any other hostiles that stand in your way. Unlike last time, we have a standard terrain type, which is great because there's going to be a lot less indestructible cover. Taking a quick look around, I'm not sure which direction we're going to be moving in. We've gotten lucky with our squad and rolled both of the extra soldiers. So we have a resistance fighter from Volunteer Army, as well as an elite trooper from Double Agent. Before we send our Reaper out, I'm just checking to see if there are any civilians below us. I go where you tell me. We're approaching the edge of the map here, so we'll move more towards the bridge. Vox says I am to obey. We've found our first pod, an Archon and a Sectoid. We can remote start these two, but the rest of our squad is quite far back. Still, remote start won't break concealment, so we can wait for a turn if necessary. Enjoy the show. Our skirmisher can grapple up for some shots, but it's only a 64% chance to hit.
Our grenadier can't get in a position for a shot either. We can use combat presence to give her another action though. On the move. Now we've broken concealment. We'll bring the rest of our squad up for overwatch. Rolling out. We could use the grapple with our sharpshooter, but it might be more useful later. No need to ask twice. Servos at maximum. I'm all over it. None of detection. We're picking up an inbound advent transport. The aliens are going to try and extract the general from the AO. Don't let him get on board that ship. We've got a bit of distance to cover. We'll check for civilians again and then send our Reaper out. As you order, Commander. We've got two separate pods here. We've got a stun lancer, a priest and a trooper. And then we have the sectopod, a shield bearer and another trooper. We're safe to dash up our squad, but the stun lancer pod might patrol into us. I decide to dash up towards the left side, so that we should be far enough away that they don't spot us. Copy that. Maximum range. A long run. Will do. Roger that. Got it covered! Got it covered. Not only did we activate the pod, but one of them revealed our Reaper, which also activated the Sectopod. We can hit four of the enemies with our Shredstorm Cannon though, and while it will expose our Reaper, we can also destroy the Priest's cover too. We'll just check we're not hitting our Grenadier with this, make some final adjustments, and then take the shot. The Sectopod is the big threat here, because it will do so much damage even if we throw out a Mimic Beacon. We'll send our Grenadier in first for hollow targeting. No problem, boss. We've got a 100% chance to hit, and Chain Shot is 85. It's a bit risky, but I decide to go for Chain Shot anyway.
We've got three targets on low health now. We'll try to bring our sharpshooter in for face-off. This is a pretty common bug. You can see that you can get on top of this structure, but the game has a real hard time dealing with these containers when they're underneath a bridge like this. Even though I'm changing elevation, it won't let me select those tiles. We'll have to go in on foot. We just need to work out which tile will let us see the most targets. The pillar from the bridge is making this awkward. We can move our trooper and ranger out of the way to make room though. We can go for a flank and finish off the trooper on the right. Moving to fire position. Affirmative. We got a misclick, so we're in a pretty exposed position. We should be able to kill most of them though, and use the mimic beacon to distract the rest. You see that? Our reaper can't reconceal yet. We can use a claymore though, rather than taking shots. As long as we throw it close enough to the sectopod, then it should detonate when it explodes. We can kill the stun lancer with face-off, and the trooper is more of a threat than the priest, plus it will remove his cover. Now we wait. Then we'll move our reaper out of the way, he's not going to take any shots. Now we just need to move our sharpshooter in for shots. I'm looking for a position where our sharpshooter can hit at least three targets. This pillar is still a problem though, as it's blocking our line of sight. We couldn't reach this tile before, because our ranger was in the way. Closing on target position now. We'll take the lightning hands shot first, just to make sure the claymore detonates. Our spark still has a couple actions. We'll use Bombard to guarantee the kill on the trooper. Insufficient damage on target. You can see that at this point in the game, we have a pretty crazy damage output. Even though we activated two pods, including a sectopod, we were able to easily handle it. We didn't even have to use our skirmisher and the mimic beacon, as well as our two extra soldiers. I am watching. We've killed 8 enemies, so there should only be one more pod on the map. I forgot to reconceal our reaper here, but thankfully there wasn't anyone nearby. I was born in the shadows. I go what I'm needed. We haven't seen the commander yet, 
but he's going to be heading towards the extraction zone, so we'll just move up and wait for him to come to us. Finally! Heading out. We'll reload our Grenadier, just to make sure she has enough ammo for her abilities. Overwatch. The invaders sent the battle. I have the objective in range. Target identity confirmed. That's the General. Take him out before they can escape. We won't get another shot at this. Now the commander has walked into view, we'll stick him with the claymore to guarantee the first hit. A gift for you. Then we'll bring the rest of the squad a bit closer, and try to catch him in an overwatch next turn. We'll try to put our grenadier in front, so she applies hollow targeting first. I'm going. Proceeding to target. Moving out. Let's move already. Finally. Got it covered. I'm getting some. Tracking on fire. My turn on watch. Got it right now. Unfortunately, he only moved one tile. We can't move any closer without activating him. He's quite close to the extraction zone, so he might be able to get out next turn if we're unlucky. Instead, we'll just use Banish to guarantee the kill. I am on the move. Kill confirmed. That's how it's done. We need to clear the area of any remaining hostiles. We can't allow them to recover the- His escort is a shield bearer, all the way on the other side of the map. We're not worried about him. He's only going to use energy shield as his first action. Let's get the show on the road. He's so far away that we're going to struggle to do anything to him. I'm not even sure where he is. I thought he was around here somewhere. We could fire a rocket into the ether just to see if we can hit him, but we can use saturation fire instead for a longer hit area. Our sharpshooter can actually grapple all the way down the bridge though, which should give us eyes on the shield bearer. You can see how I completely missed with our grenadier, as he was actually back here. We have a few good shots with our sharpshooter, but he's quite well armored. Even if we still had our grenadier, she wouldn't be able to get a clean shot with the rocket. We'll move our spark onto the checkpoint roof, and then give them another action with our skirmisher's combat presence.
They propped their hair trigger, but we'll give it to our sharpshooter. Got him! We have confirmation. Mission accomplished. For that last enemy, we could have taken a quick draw shot first, but fanfire was more than enough. As mentioned earlier, you're starting to see how powerful your squads can get in XCOM. We activated two pods, including a sectopod, and just completely wiped the floor with them. Our Shredstorm cannon in particular did over 40 damage in a single attack. Otherwise it was a straightforward mission. We brought a strong squad for the hunter and he didn't turn up. I'm always pleased when the troops return without any reported casualties. Can't hope for a better outcome. Considering the limited resources available to you, Commander, you have still managed to exceed my expectations. Excellent work. The high alert dark event makes it so that your squad doesn't start with concealment on any mission. While we could probably manage with our Reapers, this was still a good dark event to counter. We don't need any more alloys or alarium. Our hunt the chosen action will finish any day now, so we'll just carry on contacting for now. For West Africa. AP rounds are okay, but you can often shred most of the armor anyway. We'll go put another set of ammo on the queue instead. Sounds good, Commander. I'll let you know as soon as the We'll also put another powered weapon on the queue to try and get a blaster launcher. We had some wounded soldiers requiring treatment after that last covert action. With a few days rest, they'll be ready to get back into it. We've learned another piece of information about the Chosen and their schemes. My followers grow increasingly reverent of your abilities, Commander. We continue to progress in our campaign against the Elders, and now we gain new abilities as a result. Our influence with the Resistance factions has motivated them to share some new information on the Chosen. We can recruit another Templar if we wanted to, but I only really need the one. In the base game, you're only allowed to recruit one extra faction hero. This is coming from a mod that allows you to get an extra one for all the factions. We have a couple decent options here, especially with the promotion. We should check to see how long we've got until the end of the month first though. I should have just expanded the event queue here. We've only got seven days left, and the next hunt the chosen mission will take eight. The hunter's getting relatively close to an Avenger assault, so I want to make sure this is done as early in the month as possible. We need a major to go on this mission, but I still need to retrain Brigand for Blademaster. The action has a chance of ambush, but sending a Templar negates that risk, so we can take any units we want. immediately commander before i forget again we'll put our phantom ranger in for retraining now we have our basic psi operative depending on who you ask psionics could be considered Unfortunately psionics in XCOM 2 can be trained up entirely by keeping them in the Psy Lab, so that's what we're going to keep doing until he has all the abilities. While Domination is very powerful, we'll go for Stasis first. We'll eventually have all the abilities anyway. Covert Action Ambushes is unfortunate, but we can deal with it. We finished the Stasis Suit project, 
so we'll just move straight on to the next one. Commander, the aliens continue to make progress on the Avatar project. If we're... There's the Elder's assassin. Hard at work. Well, contacts located. In order to get the Africa Continent bonus, we need to build two relays. We just have to decide which two regions would be best. At this rate, I'll be touring the Avenger in no time. Both of the Europe regions cost 80 intel to contact, and all the Africa regions have a similar income increase, so it doesn't really matter which ones we pick. Eventually I make the obvious choice. Every time you build a relay it increases the cost, but we have plenty of supplies to work with. East Africa. I will spread fear across this world. All will know what lies ahead. Our friends in the resistance are paying a heavy price with the chosen running loose. We should do what we can to take them down before they hit again. Now we have a second grapple suit, which we can put on our rangers for more mobility. And our Phantom Ranger has finished retraining, so now we can give him Blade Master. We'll do that later though. Priority message coming through, Commander. Putting it on screen now. I had high hopes for the Resistance under your leadership, Commander. And you have outdone yourself. I was good before. But this is something else entirely. I'm on a whole other level. While Shadow Step is quite annoying because it means you can't get extra damage from Overwatch ambushes, in the grand scheme of things, there are a lot worse chosen strengths you could get, such as Blast Shield or Plane Walker, for example. It looks like the roles have flipped now, so now the assassin is actually closer to doing an Avenger assault. Neither one of these dark events are particularly scary. Rural checkpoints could be a problem in the early game, but we're already quite rich and don't need to build much else. Now we can move feedback into a Templar slot and we'll see if they have any other orders we want. There's nothing stand out here, but we could do soldier XP gains and try to level up some kernels a little bit quicker. As for our wild card slot, we could do black market costs to try and get some more weapon attachments. We have a good amount of intel, but we may need more before the final few missions. The alternative would be to do tactical analysis, which probably won't have much effect for us. My followers will obey. We'll make our monthly trip over to the black market to see what they've got. Market is open. Superior hair trigger is always good. There's not really anything else we're interested in here. We've got far too many supplies as it is, but we may as well sell some of our excess. We'll want to hang on to the alien dead Akashas though, because we've only got 205 intel. We don't have any new options. So we'll just go back to building the relay. For the East African We're waiting for our Hunt the Chosen action to go through, then we'll see what our options are. A new council mission. 
This one's also in the hunter's territory, and there's only nine enemies, which is a bit suspicious. The reward is a scientist and some intel, which is alright. In terms of enemies, we've got a sectopod, heavy mech, and specters. There's nothing stand out here except if the Chosen shows up. Setting course for the Indian Regional Zone.